Hey, what's going on guys? So today we're talking about rescue tools for your vehicle. So what uh, made me want to try this out was refining that tool right there. All right, this is from CRKT. This is pretty old school. All right, this is their exit tool. Twist that so you can see it. They actually have uh, newer versions of this that I uh, recently saw. Well, I rediscovered this exact one. It wasn't being used and I couldn't remember why I stopped using it. <laughs> so I used it again for a few days and I remember why. And it's because it rattles. So it's a really simple tool. You can see it sits on the um, seatbelt here. All right, you pop this open. So you pull those two tabs away from each other and get it off. All right, it has a seatbelt cutter. It's very easy to use right there. All right, and it has a glass punch that's just exposed. We'll talk about that in a second there. And then a little switch for a little LED. And the LED you can pop on for a constant on. All right, so light can be very important if you crash, you know, have an accident at night. You can just use this in an emergency if for some reason, you know, your interior lights aren't working. But, uh, I mean, it's a really simple concept. I love the idea that someone thought, hey, let's just put this right in the seatbelt. You know, people wearing the seatbelt, it's right there. You can't lose it. You're not going to forget it. So how this is really advertised is to use above the buckle. So let me open this up. I'm doing this one-handed. Let's put this above the buckle where it's supposed to be. Okay, just like this. So when you buckle your seatbelt, all right, we'll go ahead and clip this in here. Show you that real quick. Seatbelt's on, it's across your chest or whatever. It's always right there. My problem with that is twofold. Uh, the first problem I have really is that this, when I'm taking my buckle off, and I've done this in the past in the, uh, the RAV4, and I think I even got this when I had my 200 as well. So you go to, you know, let go of your buckle, and it just ends up whacking the side of your vehicle. And guess what? That exposed spike is just no good for that. That's just asking for trouble. Not to mention, even though it's short, you could pinch yourself or poke your side, especially if you're a big dude and all your body meat is pushed against, you know, the side where your seatbelt is. So what if you turn it around? Well, let's see. If I open this up and spin around the other direction, close it like that. To me, this is worse because now when you buckle this, this is just going to scribe the side. You're going to have marks, crazy scratches, and, and just a lot of damage on the inside of the vehicle. So that exposed little point there is just no bueno. So that's why I didn't have it uh, above the buckle. But having it below the buckle, let me put that back on there. All right. Um, it just, it would rattle, right? So my seatbelt's on me. All right. So let me hook this up again. Sorry, I'm all over the place with the camera. So, you know, seatbelt's on me, it's out of here or whatever, and as I'm driving, this thing is just, you know, rubbing and rattling and making noises. Now, I suppose, if you really wanted to, you could rectify that with some tape. Uh, if you were to use some, like, let's say, uh, electrical tape, and you kind of built up this channel here. So let's say you put a lot of tape on this panel. This way, it's a thicker panel, so when you actually attach it you know, to your seatbelt, it's like press fit, so it doesn't want to move around. Because the, the sliding up and down is what's allowing that to really rattle, more so than just back and forth. But long story short, I don't like the exposed spike here. It's just too too easy to damage the interior of the vehicle. Um, so what I've been using forever, let me get inside the truck here, show you this. Hang on a second. Shut my door here. So what I've been using forever and ever and ever is right here. This is the Stat Gear. Um, I think they call this the Supervisor, which is you know a clever name because it goes on your visor here. So this has. Let me see. I don't know how well you can see this, but this just velcros to your visor. You see, there's the uh, the loop in there. So here's the tool. It's really easy to use. The main thing here is, of course, your seatbelt cutter blade and attached to the front is your glass breaker. All right, so it's actually very comfortable to use in your hand. So you can use it like this, cut off your seatbelt, and of course you can use it in a reverse grip here. And you have to obviously be careful, you don't wanna cut your hand up, but that is pretty far from the base of your hand. So when you go to do a quick punch on the corner of your your um, you know side uh, window, um, you, know, you can break that out fairly easily. So, I mean, this is just my, my go-to. It's been my go-to since I've had the Chrysler 200. I had it all through the RAV4. I've had two different versions of this. I had a black handle, but this is the newer one. 
um, and now it's of course in the uh, the Tacoma. So there it is, just out of the way. I don't even notice it. I know some people wouldn't like the idea of hanging something on their visor. You can get creative with this strap. You could put this anywhere that's going to be obviously reachable in some kind of an accident. Now, if you're a gear person, you know that you know, three is two, two is one, one is none. Uh, I say three is two, two is one, one is none because I have three different ways to escape from the vehicle if necessary. So let's just say I'm in some horrible accident and my visor breaks off and this goes flying in the back seat for whatever reason. I don't know. I guess it can happen. So now my way to escape out of my vehicle is no longer an option because I'm, let's say I'm stuck in my seatbelt or something or my legs are pinned, who knows what, and I can't reach this anymore. It's somewhere else in the vehicle. Well, in the center console, I also have a Rescue Me, which I highly, highly recommend. These are fantastic. Right, they come in a bunch of different colors. They're really simple to use. You can put this on your keychain. You pull this part off, which is a little hard one-handed, but then you expose that seatbelt cutter blade. So besides the seatbelt cutter, this has a spring-loaded punch. Very popular for auto escape type tools. So it, it's a no brainer. You literally push this against the window until the little the spring tension builds up as this piece pushes down. I'm not going to do it on my thumb here, obviously. Uh, but when you get to the very bottom, that little spike shoots out. So instead of an exposed spike like we have, you know, with the CRKT exit tool, right, where in order to use this to break the window, you have to physically go like that. You have to, you know, punch hard. And by doing that, there's a likelihood you're going to cut yourself. If you're breaking your glass out of your car to get out because you're trying to survive, I guess, you know, cut up hand is not a big deal, but that's a manual way to break the window, whereas the spring-loaded ones, it just takes less effort, less thought, really, and less technique. You just push it until it pops, and that's it. The window's going to shatter out. All right, and I can't show you now because it's locked up, but in the glove box, I have my third tool, which is a Benchmade Houdini, uh, and you can look that up if you want. It's the, the small original Houdini. I think the second one had an actual like full-size handle, which I did have at some point, but I no longer have. But that's in there. So if for some reason my stat gear tool goes flying because the visor breaks off, and then I, for some reason this opens up and all this stuff goes flying everywhere and I can't get to the, the rescue me thing, uh, I guess my, my last choice would be to dip into my pocket, <laughs> grab my keys, unlock my glove box, and get to the Benchmade Houdini. So anyway, long story short, if you don't have some way to get out of your vehicle in an emergency, you should probably consider it. And also, I'm just curious, who still uses these, the exit tools? Like I said, fantastic idea. They do have a newer version that's more um, ergonomic, I think. It has like some curves and stuff in it. It's not just this little block. I like this. I like the idea. I just really wish this wasn't exposed. If this had, and I know in this particular design, it can't have it, but if it had a spring punch here, I wouldn't be so concerned about it, but it doesn't. You know, I don't know, unless they had some kind of rubber cap or something. I'm sure there's something I can rig, but I'm not that interested in rigging something up. I, I just, I use this for the longest time, and then I decide not to, and I just uh, reuse it to remind myself why. So it's a cool concept, but for me, it just doesn't work because of the possibility of damaging the interior so badly. So I just wish that wasn't, you know, exposed like that. And like I said, it could be a simple fix. You can get a little rubber cap or something somewhere from something else and pop it on there, and it'd be a non-issue. If that's what you think, then maybe this is something you want to look into, at least the newer versions. But anyway, that's all. Thanks for watching. Let me know down in the comment section what you have to break out your glass in your vehicles if you get trapped um, and or cut off your seatbelt. I can tell you, if you haven't seen my you know past story time videos, I was in a very bad accident in a Jeep, uh, Jeep Grand Cherokee, excuse me, with my friend, and we flipped it and rolled a bunch of times, and it landed upside down, and we were locked in our seatbelts. And the only reason we were able to escape is because I happened to carry a knife ever since I was 11 years old. I had a Gerber Easy Out on me. And uh, luckily I didn't cut myself. You know, I know, you know, in these scenarios where we see these seatbelt cutters that are like no-brainers. You, If you have an actual knife blade, sure, you can cut open your, your seatbelt. But in an emergency, and if it's real tight against your skin, which mine was at the time, it was difficult to actually use that. Uh, it took me like probably 30 or 40 seconds to cut through the seatbelt. And then I dropped to the ceiling and, you know, kind of got my bearings a little bit, and then I cut my friend out. Now, my friend happened to be a lot skinnier than me, so there was a big gap on, on the edge of where the seatbelt was, so it was a lot easier to cut him out. But cutting myself out, being a, a big fat kid, teenager, you know, hanging upside down on a locked seatbelt, that was not, not easy with just a, a bare blade. Um, but like I said, luckily, 
we, you know, we, we walked away from that accident. All we had were cuts in our nose and, and hair and face and stuff from the, uh, the windshield and, and the glass that went flying everywhere. Um, but anyway, something to consider. There's a, you know, a very small chance you're going to get trapped in your vehicle and you have to actually break your glass or cut your seatbelt off. But you just never know, right? If you have that, you know, prepared mindset, these are the things you think about. So if you haven't thought about it before, it might be something you want to consider. If, uh, if nothing else at all, I think my biggest recommendation, even though I love my stack gear one, the simplest thing really is this rescue me thing. These are super cheap, sub $10. I want to say it's like six or seven bucks or something. Ton of different colors if you want it to go on your keychain. And if you have your keys in your vehicle, it's probably close by enough, right? You can obviously uh, attach this key ring to anything in the interior as well. If, even if you wanted to, you know, mount something around your stick shift or something, just so that it's always available. Just keep in mind, if you get into an accident, you're going to have a, a violent shaking of the vehicle. So if you have something loose, like let's say you're just keeping your cup holder. <laughs> well, what if your vehicle flips upside down? You're not going to be able to get to this very easily. Who knows where it's going to be? Like I said, it might be way in the back seat or the back window, or maybe you got ejected from the car. Anything loose in your car goes flying if you get into an accident. So something to keep in mind. Anyway, that's all. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you have an awesome day. And I will see you tomorrow with a brand new video. Take care.